What's up? It's Liam Killen. I presume that you guys are doing well today, scouring YouTube for information on music production to better yourselves. And then you find yourself watching one of my videos. In my opinion, layering, and especially layering drums, is an absolute necessity as a producer in 2020. Obviously, if you're doing more of like a fully live setup, it might be a bit of a different story, but I don't know, even then, people drop in samples. It's just the way it is now. We want that extra like drive and smack and that's exactly what we're gonna be working on today. We'll be layering with my newest drum sample pack, which I just released, it's called LK Meat and Potatoes. The bulk of it is just straight up live acoustic drum loops, which I recorded at my buddy's studio. And yeah, I put like an extra emphasis on being very straightforward and tasteful within these beats with the producer in mind. And we're talking like extra meat sauce. <laughs> Here are a few grooves from the pack. We'll be looking at the diversity of this pack in this video and it's pretty bulky too. We've got 170 loops in total, 93 one shots, so that's a total of 263 samples. That's pretty big for a sample pack. Meat and potatoes, you'll get a good idea of what it sounds like here. I'm also gonna be making a full other video going specifically into the pack, so stay tuned for that. Okay. Right before we get started, let's take a look at a few of your questions from last video. The first question is from Cam Ruffle Diegnan. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm messing up your names. Hey Liam, glad to hear about more content for the OP1. It is such a wonderful machine. I'm sure that you are aware, but Jeremy at Red Means Recording has many instructional videos on the OP1 and just released one today on the different synth engines. How do you see your content differentiated from his? So this is a question that pertains to the OP1 course that I'm working on releasing. It's still in development phase right now. It's definitely true that there is a lot of other OP1 information out there. The thing about this course is that it's gonna be very pointed. So far I've outlined about 50 different videos that will be going into each and every aspect of the instrument and it's all gonna be in one spot so you're not gonna to have to scour YouTube to find individual parts of the instrument. It's also gonna include hands-on homework assignments which will really push you to learn each aspect of the instrument. And it's all organized and tight properly for you all in one place so it's super easy to access all of this information. Like I said, I'm developing this. There's still quite a bit more work to be done and I'll be keeping you guys updated on what's being added to the course. The internet hasn't really seen like a full on OP1 course. That's what I'll be giving you guys. If you guys have any other questions about it, please let me know in the comments. I'll get to all of your questions. Second question is from Ryan Hare, that's an easy pronunciation. I've been eyeing the 404 for a while. I think it's a magical combo with the OP1. I'm unfamiliar with the workflow. Would you have to offload your OP1 tracks to PC, then PC to 404? Or is there a way to do it away from your home as well? Absolutely love the track at 545, by the way. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, each SP404 has one of these. There's quite a bit of memory on this one, so that's great. And you could upload tracks from your computer directly onto this and then put it into your, to the 404. If you're using the OP1 though, you could sample directly into the SP404 and work that way as well. One other thing about outdoor performances, I use this cute little Zoom H1N. So I would record from the headphone out of the SP404 into this and then plug my headphones into this, use it as a little mixer. That's how it's done. That's how I do it. Thanks for your questions. Let's get into some layering. Here we are, we're gonna be breezing through three different groups today, starting with this one. Okay, so straight out of the gate, let's pull down these drums and I'm gonna A-B this. So this is just my drum loop alone. And now we'll listen with all of the layers on it. So obviously there's a lot going on here and we're going to, as they say, uh, unpack this. The first thing I knew I wanted to add was kick drum. So I landed on this particular kick. In this particular example, I had to add a kick on every time that the kick was playing in the original loop. So I just layered it like that. Right off the bat, this makes the kick punchier, but in the overall mix, it's a bit muddy in the low end. So this is why I decided to EQ all of the low end out of the original loop. So here's the before and after of that.
So I cut right up to 115 hertz, and if you sidechain that to the kick and play them together, you could see that leaves some nice low end. So now the two kicks aren't battling with each other, it just sounds better in the mix. Okay! The snare in this groove is already really fat, so I didn't have much to add to it. I just added like a, a perk layer over top of every backbeat, so that's on beats two and four. This is a really fun part of making music for me, first of all because I'm a drummer, and second of all, the kick and snare could make or break your track. If you find the right snare or clap or whatever to make it pop, finding that is the best feeling. Listening to that is also a great feeling. My main point is that it's worth that extra attention. I actually use this tool called Steven Slate Trigger 2. Oftentimes when you're searching for the right sound, there's a lot of back and forth, and this plugin makes the whole process a lot easier. And here's a video on that if you're interested. So the snare, perk, clap, whatever that perk is, is very subtle, it's very low in the mix. I think the reason why it fits well with this loop is because the snare occupies like the 200 hertz range, and this is over top of that, so once again, those two frequencies aren't battling each other. Oftentimes the way I'll think of it is fat snare, that's what I want to be up front. I'll add something in the high mids over top of that, maybe, and sometimes I'll even add a third layer, which is like the high highs. So you're covering, your snare is covering the whole spectrum. Get that extra snappiness. Let's take a look at the third layer. So I added toms over top of what was already being played in the loop. If you're using a drum loop, tom fills are oftentimes pretty far back in the mix. So it's always good to layer them with, if you have the same tom from the session like this, or just a straight up different tom. And then we have a fourth layer, which is hi-hats. I think of the hi-hats the same way as the other drums that we've been layering. The hi-hats in the acoustic loop are pretty high-pitched. I use this plugin called Little Alter Boy and pitch the hi-hats down so that they didn't get in the way of the hi-hats from the original loop. They also just sound a bit more badass like that too, so yeah. That's it for this one. Let's move on to the next track. meets lo-fi, chill. I did a very similar thing with this track layer-wise, so we're gonna be focusing more on when those layers come in. I would say that the drums in this track, and in most tracks, are one of the most prominent parts of the arrangement. This is one of those like subtle lo-fi chill tracks where every single layer counts, and it's all about being tasteful. Generally, the way that I thought of it was with each melodic instrument that comes in, it's supported by either a perk part or a drum part. The first layer that came in is an 808 snare. It's very subtle and it supports the snare drum that's already in the track. Once again, very subtle, but it's filling in something that that rim click just isn't covering. That snare supports the guitar part that's coming in. Eight bars into the track, the bass comes in, so that's low frequency. I wanted to support it with a lot of either high frequency or high mid. So there's a snare that's added, there's a second shaker, and there's also a second hi-hat that's added as well. So that, that covers a lot of space. Now, by the time the hook of the song comes in, it's being supported by a full band. So you have like a full percussion and drum section, you have another guitar player playing rhythm, and you have bass. And then finally, to keep the momentum going at the end of the track, there's two last elements that are added. There's a tambourine and a cabasa. I'm explaining it, it might seem like this part is pretty easy, but it's it's not. It takes a lot of trial and error and kind of just like feeling out which parts work, which sounds work, and when different layers should be coming in and out. I mean, not something to worry about, because as you keep doing it, 
You're just gonna get better and better. One last thing about this track, let's take a look at the shakers and how I pan them. Panning is another element that's super important when it comes to layering. So you can see it right here, I've got shaker middle, shaker right, so that's pan completely to the right, and then shaker left, pan completely to the left. So now you have like a full stereo signal of perks. A lot of my other perks are being panned too. So if you check out tambo rhythm, so that's to the left, cabasa is down the middle. I've got that second hi-hat that's playing, that's also to the left. I've got a snare layer which is panned to the right. So once again, another thing to experiment with, there's no like right or wrong answer to this either. You'll find out what, what you like. We're gonna be using the Drum Brute Impact for this one. This is a really great straightforward drum machine made by Arturia and I recommend it to anybody. If you're like instantly enthralled by it, there's a purchase link in the description of this video. So to start off with, I have this like Tony Allen inspired drum groove from my sample pack. Let's add some drum brute to this. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly program something and then I'll show you what I've got. So let's hear my loop along with the drum brute together. So probably the busiest and uh, weirdest beat that I've ever made. <laughs> I use some of the same EQing techniques from the other two beats. And this is just another way of doing it. There's no actual like parallel layering, but there's two beats that are layered on top of each other. And they're sort of bouncing off each other rhythmically, which gives a sort of hectic, funky, like Herbie Hancock sort of vibe, if you see what I'm getting at. I added like a hectic sort of synth over top of this, which I think fit pretty well. And that's it, that concludes this drum layering video. This has been super fun. If you've made it this far, power to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have plenty of other content to check out on my channel. I've actually left a link to all of my playlists in the description. Maybe there's something there that you're interested in. Once again, a lot of the drums that we were using today are from my sample pack, Meat and Potatoes. New videos from me every week. Love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bing!